Go with Paul Turton on ABC New South Wales. Well, yesterday the federal government announced it had invested half a billion dollars in boosting Australia's critical minerals industry. The funding is aiming to ramp up production and processing, particularly onshore. Right now, critical metals and minerals are widely processed in China. But hold up. Do you know what a critical mineral or metal actually is? What about rare earths? Sean Parks is a researcher with the ARC Centre of Excellence in Minerals Processing and also a University of Newcastle PhD candidate in chemical engineering, knows a bit about this stuff. She's with me now. Sean, here you go. Good, thank you, Paul. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. You give me a nice little piece of copper. When I was a kid kicking stones around Cobar, I didn't know that copper was a precious metal. Yeah, well, it's uh, definitely one of the key metals and minerals that are going to be needed for a lot of um, a lot of different technologies as we move into the future. All right, so tell us about critical minerals then. How broad a class is it? Uh, so a critical mineral is an element that's either going to be essential for the functioning of our modern technologies and our economy, and that there's a risk that we might not have enough of it for right. all of the demand. Have we got much here in New South Wales? Uh, yes, yeah, so in New South Wales, uh, we have some cobalt in Wagga Wagga. Uh, and, I mean, the critical mineral list itself changes whether yeah. you're looking at the federal or New South Wales list, but uh, gold and copper is also found a lot in Orange and Parks. Well, that was the thing about cobalt. Yes. Because it was established initially as a gold mine. Mm -hmm. So gold and copper are frequently together, are they? Uh, at least in New South Wales, we see that they, they tend to. Mm. be mined together. Typically, there's higher grades of uh, copper, but sometimes we find some gold around yeah. as well, bits of silver as well. Yeah, right on. Okay, so uh, you mentioned cobalt down around Wagga Wagga. What, what else have we got? What's... Uh... Uh, well, look, that's that's the main mines, that are be, the main materials that we mined in New South Wales at the moment, uh, but the New South Wales government are also looking into the potential for any rare earth elements okay. as well. There's a there's a huge uh, demand for those. What's the distinction between a critical mineral and rare earth? So rare earths um, are classed as a critical mineral. They're made up of uh, 15 different elements and they're really growing in importance uh, because of all their different applications and some of the really unique properties they have. Uh, what I find interesting though is we call them rare, but they're not actually rare. Okay. It's just that they're dispersed uh, so scarcely everywhere. There's not really a high enough concentration anywhere that you'd say, all right, I'm going to go dig here right and I'm going to get enough uh, to supply Australia for the next year. It's They're so scarcely um, distributed everywhere that they just tend to get lost and end up in, in waste a lot of the time. Yeah, um, so getting commercial quantities of some of these is particularly difficult, Yeah, right? it's really difficult. I mean, just what there's a mine in South Australia that is found now that they have these rare earth elements. Um, connected to the copper that they're recovering, but because they're focused on the copper, these elements ending up in waste. Oh, wow. And it's uh, terrifying to think how much would have been wasted over the centuries, right? Oh, exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly what our centre is looking at, um, how we can improve the recovery of these minerals and how we can go back to waste streams and look at them as a completely new resource that we can recover these materials out and, and make, uh, make sure that the supply and the demand are being met. Um, across the world. Uh, we know, of course, um, the Great Basin that impacts on the Hunter Valley stretches up into the northwest and out into the central western New South Wales. We know we've got plenty of coal there, for example. Mm -hmm. If we were to grab a, a, a bit of dirt from anywhere and, and run it through a spectrometer, for want of a better word, you know, to, to analyse the contents of it, would we be surprised at how many different minerals and, and elements would be present in just dirt from anywhere? Look, I'm sure we would. Australia is an amazing country in the sense that we've got such rich resources everywhere and a lot of that is untapped and, and we have to maybe refer back to Geoscience Australia and all of their um, studies where they're looking into where there could be um, deposits that could be really useful. But yeah, I guess until we run it through uh, some of those technologies, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a mystery. So how big is industry in Australia? Can we capitalise on the opportunities here? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, like you said earlier, like a lot of the offshore processing, a lot of the processing isn't happening onshore. Uh, so any any change to that would be beneficial. But yeah, our, our centre especially is working on um, looking at developing and improving processes across the whole spectrum of minerals processing. And we've got a lot of great talent here, uh, which is exciting.
It sounds like one of the uh, traditional metals, copper, is, mm -hmm. has got a very strong future as well. Yes. What, what's that resource like in New South Wales at the moment? Have we got, have we got plenty of that or is, it, is that something that's going to be, we're going to see a shortage at some point? Yeah, uh, so we've got, again, like I said, lots in uh, parks and around Orange. Um, and it's not listed as a critical mineral by the Australian government, it is by New South Wales, but it is one of those um, metals and minerals that is going to be hugely important to the future. So it's been estimated actually that there'll be more copper needed in the next 20 years for all our electric vehicles and all our clean energy technologies than we'll have used um, in all of human history. Yeah. Yeah. And we know we talk a lot about batteries, of course, and the oh, role yep. that the, uh, the precious metals will be playing in that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, um, and recently I've spent some time in Germany actually looking at recycling batteries and semiconductors to see that once we've got those minerals and metals, how we can recycle them and, and sort of transition to more of a circular economy as well. But all of those metals and minerals are going to be really important for our future. And the recycling element is a critical part, isn't it? Because there will ultimately be shortages, but also the whole notion of uh, looking after the planet requires that even our so-called environmental solutions are environmentally friendly in the longer term. Exactly. Because, you know, criticisms have been levelled at a lot of our technologies and their durabilities. Yeah, no, that is so important. And when you've gone to all of the effort of processing all of these metals and minerals and that battery or that electric vehicle's come to the end of its life, being able to recover and recycle all of those components is, is important, especially when we think about the environment. And of course, uh, while we're discussing the environment, there's a strong push against mining. Uh, it's been... Uh, a Fossil fuel mining, of course, has been the traditional focus, but there are concerns, environmental concerns around generation of dust, generation of noise and the impact that that has on communities as well. So we've got to, we've got to balance those challenges as well. Exactly. Look, it's, it's so important. Um, there was a quote I read recently from the Minerals Council of Australia. So before it was yours, it was mined. So everything everything we touch and interact with on a daily basis at some point has come come from minerals processing. Um, and our centre is, is really focused then on reducing the environmental impact of that by reducing the energy and water requirements, reducing the waste, and also improving our recovery of these important minerals as well. So we're not going to see mines springing up everywhere in the short to medium term based on you know, our, our desire to get more of these uh, precious metal? Yeah, look, I, I can't comment yeah. on that. You'd have to talk to some mining companies, I guess, but um, I don't, don't see a mine popping up anywhere in the, in the middle of Newcastle. But, I mean, once we understand better where our resources lie, um, we might be able to uh, recover more minerals that will be beneficial to Australia. But, yeah, you'd have to speak to some other experts on that, I think. Sharon, good on you. Thanks for coming in. Sean Parks is a researcher at the ARC Centre of Excellence in Minerals Processing and also a PhD candidate at the University of Newcastle. And it's 